it's uh, something that I've been well researching is um, is is a hardly applicable word in some ways because to research means to look for and you do do that of course you do but after some extraordinary um, uh, what people would call paranormal experiences in 1990 and 91 um, my life has become since then this synchronistic series of coincidences um, which have led me to and even brought to me really um, people, personal experiences, documents, books and all these different sources um, that have put information before me in a very coordinated way like some hidden hand is passing information to you and it's not just random information it's information that very clearly as it comes into my life has a a direction it has a um, a series of steps so in the early 1990s the information that was coming into my life was about the fact that there was a a cobal that was manipulating uh, human society and world events towards the goal of a Orwellian global state mm. in which um, there would be a, a world government dictating to every country. Countries would be dismantled and become regions of great power structures. The European Union is a classic. Um, and what we're seeing now with the European Union is the next stage of breaking countries up by destroying them financially and then um, centrally dictating financially and, and in terms of government. Um, and that there was a plan for a global army to impose the will of the world government, uh, a world central bank to impose um, the cabal's um, global financial structure and uh, control, and that the plan was for um, every child at birth to be microchipped as a matter of course. Now that was kind of whoa enough um, as the information came and of course with the passage of the years this has been confirmed more and more by the fact that it's happening. Um, then there was a phase uh, in the mid to late 1990s when while that other information continued and has continued to this present day another if you like parallel and connected series of synchronistic um, this situations is. happened in my life which brought information to me and this mm. related to the fact that the network of families which go back to the ancient world that are behind this control system I've just described and, and its ambitions mm. actually take a non-human form a, a, a not just reptilian though that seems to be the dominant one but and I uh, moved on from that too and gone into other levels of it beyond that uh, but that there is a non-human force um, behind this uh, attempt to lock down the world. And then from about 2002-2003 right to the present day, all these continue, once they come in, into my life, these different areas, they continue together. That's why I work 12-15 hours a day mm. keeping up with it. But this third phase from about 2000-2003 was the most important because without this you can't really understand the rest and that was about the nature of reality the illusory nature of what we call physical reality the fact that solidity is delusional and that we live in a holographic illusory physical reality which is only one level of many multi-levels of this reality which operates on a waveform uh, uh, level, vibrational level, it operates on an electrical level, it operates on a digital level and it operates on the holographic level which we in the conscious mind perceive as, as the world. And to appreciate that when I look through my 
eyes, another illusion funnily enough, which is why when people have near-death experiences, they leave the body and they're looking down on the body with the eyes, but they're still seeing. Hmm. So, I mean, the, the, the scale of illusion in our so-called physical experience is, is extraordinary. I mean, and we've not got to the bottom of it yet. But um, it is that when I look through my eyes, shall we say, that um, people think that they're, they're seeing everything there is to see in the space that I'm looking at. They're, no, they're not. They're seeing a tiny band of frequency called visible light which is so tiny, mm -hmm. it is ludicrous. Um, and the rest of uh, what exists in this universe, and even mainstream science would say this, although it's Stone Age science, I would suggest, but even it sees this, that the overwhelming vast majority of what exists in this universe, in energy, matter, mass, whatever you want to call it, its different forms, we cannot see. And therefore, we are living, if you like, in like a, a holographic television channel. Mm -hmm. So, all I'm seeing now as I look here is this tiny frequency range called visible light. Channel, channel one. Yeah, but all the other um, levels of reality also share the same space as the one that we're experiencing. And, you know, we've got digital television coming in now and all that stuff. But um, if you take the analog version of television, at radio too, hmm. um, they are sharing the same space without interfering with each other. Wow. Because they're on different frequencies. And thus, interpenetrating this reality that we experience um, with a conscious mind, it are all the other realities where very, very different worlds are manifest and with very different uh, what we call laws of physics. And so it's from these frequencies that are very, very close to this one uh, that we use the term with radio and television um, where interference takes place. Um, and if you have two radio stations that are well away from each other in the frequency band, then they don't interfere with each other. You, one's not aware of the other one. But you get two frequencies that are, are, are close, and you can get, you might, it might be dominated by one, but there's interference from the other. Why? Because the frequencies are very close. Well, these um, manipulating entities, forces, shall we say, um, operate from a frequency band that's very close to this one, but not this one. So, but they might not see them, that, but, but they might yeah. be here. Well, let, let, let's give an example. You'll see stories um, of UFOs appearing out of nowhere and disappearing into nowhere. You'll hear stories about uh, people saying this entity appeared out of nowhere and disappeared into nowhere. Well, they haven't disappeared. Mm -hmm. well, uh, and they haven't appeared out of nowhere. What they've done is they've entered the frequency band that we can decode, um, the, the visible light frequency band that I'm talking about, and when it enters that, we start decoding that information because it's now in our ability to do that. And as we start decoding it, bang, to the, to the observer, it appears that it's just come out of nowhere. And then it leaves that frequency range, and to the observer, it's disappeared into nowhere. It hasn't. It's just left that band that we can decode, which is tiny. And so, when you... And I find this particularly compelling. Um, when I go around different ancient beliefs and explanations of what's happening, and you find that although they're using different names, they're telling the same story. Mm. Uh, for instance, um, there was a, a group of people, or a, a, shall we say a belief system, which goes back hundreds of years and has become known as Gnostic. This was the belief system of people that ran the, the, the great library of Alexandria um, with uh, Hypatia, who was slaughtered by 
a mob inspired by the Roman church because um, that library carried information and knowledge that would have, as it circulated, um, demolished the Roman church's version of everything. And um, it was challenging the Roman church version of everything. And what's interesting is whenever you come across the Gnostics belief system expressing itself, um, you, you see it's followed by slaughter, suppression and the destruction of that knowledge. <laughs> so um, the Cathars in southern France um, were Gnostics in terms of their belief system. Um, we'll go into what that belief system is in a second. Uh, and so again, in went the church and uh, all these you know, people that kill for the church and they destroyed the Cathars. It's, I think, uh, 1244, was it, was the, the, the last stand to the, the mountain fortress at Montségur in southern France in the foothills of the Pyrenees. Um, and again, it's not just we slaughter, we slaughter them, but we destroy their knowledge. But, but a, a fantastic thing happened in 1945 when um, a sealed jar of Gnostic writings, quite considerable writings, was found um, by a peasant in Egypt in 1945. And they describe much of the Gnostic belief system. Now key in my interest, one of the things, of course, as a quick aside, they were telling a very different version of the Christian story. Um, and um, we might get into that because it, it's relevant. But the, the key thing for me was that around a fifth of these texts were about a phenomenon they called the Archons. And the Archons, um, these Gnostics said, were a manipulative force that operated outside of human sight that was basically, as we would call it, an, a, 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 an energetic form rather than what we would call a physical form, though it could manifest as physical form through holographic projections and stuff. They even, and, and these writings even talked in their own way about the illusory nature of this reality. 